known now more than ever. But as many people might be wondering, what exactly is strong style? Now, while I have briefly touched upon this topic before, it's time I start delving into this discipline even more, which is what we're here to do. Because today, Dave knows strong style wrestling. Pro wrestling as we know it is not anywhere near as old in Japan as it is in Europe or even in America. In fact, things didn't really catch on until about the 1950s, but it definitely wasn't for a lack of trying. In the 1880s, Shokishi Hamada and Sorikishi Matsuda, two sumo wrestlers, went over to America to train, and it was there that American style pro wrestling caught the attention of Hamada. Upon his return to Japan, Hamada would try to make a few American style pro wrestling shows happen, but it didn't take. Why? Well, remember, this is Japan, sumo country. Sumo wrestling was just too popular, and the masses weren't looking for anything else. There was just no demand for the product. But then, going forward to the 1950s, American style pro wrestling became all the rage in Japan. So, what changed? Well, World War II. After the war, many Japanese people had a shift in attitude towards American culture, for the better. Also, there were plenty of American servicemen stationed around the country. Small tours were set up to entertain visiting Americans and to give them a taste of home. And as a result of all of this, Western culture became pretty popular in Japan. And this is where Ricky Dozen enters the scene. Ricky Dozen, a.k.a. Mitsuhiro Momoto, a.k.a. Kim Sinrak, was a sumo wrestling champion who got to tour around America for a little bit. Upon his return home in 1954, he created the JWA, the Japan Pro Wrestling Alliance. This was the very first professional wrestling company in all of Japan. Now, naturally, he booked himself to become the biggest star in Japan. Oh, and by the way, he was actually Korean, which was something that he definitely downplayed. But sadly, Ricky Dozen died as a result of injuries he sustained from a stabbing. Because of this, there was a bit of a power vacuum over who would get to fill the void in the JWA. And it all came down to two men, Shohei Baba and Antonio Inoki. Now, both of them had separate ideologies. They had their own fans, they had their own followers, and they would eventually have their own styles. Now, backstage politicking would ensue in the JWA throughout the 60s and 70s, ultimately leading to both men quitting the company in 1972, only to form their own promotions. Now, Shohei Baba does deserve his own episode, but for now, we're going to focus on Antonio Noki and his contributions to the world of pro wrestling, because it was after leaving the JWA that Noki would form New Japan Pro Wrestling, and what would eventually be known as Strong Style. Inoki, aside from being a straight-up pro wrestler, really did like to fight. He would occasionally have non-scripted battles or shoot matches with martial artists or boxers. And he would also have a very successful pro match with Muhammad Ali in 1976. And this has a lot to do with how Strong Style came to be. These mixed fighting style matches is exactly how things got rolling. Strong Style is a blend of pro wrestling moves combined with a variety of martial arts techniques. Furthermore to that, but the unscripted shoot nature of these fights that Anoki liked to have also played their part too, which is an important distinction, because there are those who mistakenly think that strong style is the same as shoot wrestling. While yes, strong style is characterized as being a much stiffer style, and strikes do tend to hit harder than they do in other styles, thus making it more realistic, just like shoot wrestling, Japan's strong style also incorporates a lot more martial arts techniques, but we'll get more into that later. For now, let's just stick with the shoot aspects of strong style. As covered in a previous video, Johnny Valentine demanded to be hit as hard as possible in order to make wrestling look more legit. And Antonio Noki's first big name match was against Johnny Valentine. So I don't think this is a coincidence. Oh, and speaking of strikes, it's important to note that in strong style, straight up close fist punches are not too common. Open hand hits, lariats, and of course, forearm blows are the weapons of choice for striking attacks. Now this probably has to do with the English wrestling and Muay Thai influence in strong style, but that's getting a bit ahead of ourselves. Because before we talk about the myriad of styles that influence strong style, we have to talk about the man who brought a lot of them to strong style to begin with. And that man is Carl Gotch. Okay, so I have talked about Carl quite a bit in other episodes, and there's still a lot left to say about Carl. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to try to keep things concise. Now you see, Carl had a lot of wrestling training, developing his own style for traveling all around the world and studying a vast variety of different fighting techniques. But two major influences come into play for this story. One has to do with Carl's time in England, where he trained in the legendary Snake Pit, a bare bones facility that believed in teaching wrestling the hard way. I actually talked about this in another episode. Now, what's important to note about the pit is that it was located in Wigan, a place known for its catch wrestling. And this is where Gosh really perfected his catch wrestling craft. Not only that, but the pit was also known for really emphasizing some 
submission wrestling, and this was not a school known for teaching the act of soft, gentle submission either. In addition to this, Gaja also spent time in India, where he studied an Indian wrestling style named Pelwani. Now, this style focuses on a series of exercises such as squats, press ups, and bridging. It then incorporates them into the fighting style. And Pelwani is also great for keeping the body flexible and agile. And now, finally, on to Carl's time in Japan. Gaj took what he learned from these styles, plus countless more, and taught them to the wrestlers of Japan, including Antonio Noki. But in addition, some of these other students brought a lot to the table as well. For example, one of his students, Masami Soranaka, studied full contact karate, Kodokan judo, and sumo wrestling. Another student, Yoshiaki Fujiwara, knew Muay Thai and had a black belt in judo. Satoru Sayamo studied Muay Thai and eventually Samba. And as strong style evolved, these disciplines incorporated themselves into the development of the discipline. So now we can see where strong style really begins to take shape. A catch wrestling based style that also includes freestyle and Greco-Roman influence as well. Now mix that all in with some serious submission holds, plus add martial arts style strikes and maneuvers from disciplines like Muay Thai, Karate, Judo, and of course Tawani, and wrap all that up in a shoot wrestling package and you get the wonder that is strong style wrestling. Oh, and real quick, let's go back to those mixed style fights that Antonio Noki liked to have. With Strong Style combining the best of the best when it comes to so many other disciplines, Inoki believed that it was 